Hi everyone. I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about color settings using uh, Adobe Illustrator. Making sure that your files and your artwork is set up for the proper print setting or uh, printing method you're going to be using. Um, by default when you're using Adobe Illustrator you're working in CMYK mode. Uh, whether you realize it or not um, your images are usually built out of CMYK colors. If you look at the um, file menu and you look at the uh, document color mode, come on, there we go. You'll see that uh, by default, <coughs> Illustrator starts off in CMYK. It's assuming that your document is going to be um, used for print eventually. Uh, it is possible to set up your documents to be RGBK. <coughs> RGB only, um, but uh, like I said, by default it's probably on CMYK. We're going to leave it in CMYK because uh, we're talking about color settings for print in Illustrator. A couple palettes that help you analyze your artwork in Illustrator are the color palette and um, also your uh, swatches palette. Um, if your color palette doesn't look like mine, all you got to do is double click the color tab and it'll expand or collapse it. What we're looking for is a view that shows the different color inks or the spread of the colors CMYK visible in uh, the swatch. Now, if you use a spot color or you use an RGB color, it's going to change uh, the way this color palette actually looks. So, for example, if I went to my color library and looked up under color books, I went to Pantone and picked up a, a Pantone color, let's say, from that color book, and I clicked one of those swatches, you'll see that that spot color swatch shows up in my swatch palette, and then the color palette shows me that this is a premixed 100% version of that Pantone orange color. So within Illustrator you can have multiple color types, CMYK, spot, mixed together, and that's why it's actually a preferred method for setting up artwork that has specialty inks in it. And that can all be saved and captured inside the Illustrator file and passed on to InDesign or your output method later on. Um, a lot of times we use spot colors for things like dyes, like outline cuts, uh, or for specialty effects. And if those colors are embedded in your Illustrator file, then they, again, get passed on to the commercial printing process. Um, there are a couple other basic things to be aware of when using color. And this is something that uh, most people don't realize when they're using their Adobe software, is that uh, Adobe software treats color um, or treats the color black differently. Um, if you're dealing digitally, you're working online, you probably don't notice it. Uh, you're working with images and they have black and it looks black. On a display screen, you, uh, you notice it as that. But there's a printer black that we need to deal with. And a lot of times uh, people find a problem when they try to print stuff that looked really good on screen, but then suddenly the black looks gray. It doesn't look like full resolution black. So I'll kind of explain that. Um, here is just a visual representation of different swatches. Now, this isn't as dynamic on screen as it would be if I printed these pages, but uh, this kind of demonstrates how even though the color looks pretty good on your screen, your result on paper is going to be totally different. But I was talking about black, so let's start with black. If I select the black swatch here, you'll see I'm calling this CMYK black. In the color palette, it shows me that it is just 100% black with zero percentage of any other color. Rich black, on the other hand, or black black, or printer black, um, has a mixture of CMYK value in addition to 100% black. Now, why is that? Well, in the printing process, depending on the paper type you're using, 100% black by itself looks like charcoal gray. It does not look like a deep, dark black. So the way around that is to make sure that graphics that use and need to have a deep black 
you got to put in a percentage value of CMYK. Now, you can get away with 25%, 35%. Um, people have different values they use, but you'd never want to put like 100. When you did 100 CMYK of each color, you'd get a smear and a smudge and it'd be too too much ink in one spot. So generally, about 35% is a good average for those uh, those colors. Now registration black, that's something else that Illustrator has available for you. If you click on registration black, registration black actually is treated like a spot color. Um, and it's specifically used for all of the printer marks on your documents. So your crop marks and your registration marks and little um, you know, preview boxes and things on the edges of your uh, printing artwork on your uh, your bleeds and all that stuff that's all done with registration black because those things need to show up in each color they need to show up on your cyan magenta your yellow and your black so that swatch in um, illustrator is represented by this little target swatch it might be hard to see on this little video but that target swatch looks like black on your screen but it's actually when printing it separates into a black on every uh, color separation. So that's important to know the difference. Now, I in the beginning I mentioned something about the way Adobe treats black. Well, there is uh, the ability to control how Illustrator is going to display black on your screen. Now, a lot of people who work with print do this to their Adobe software to make sure that they're getting uh, the proper feedback from their monitors. And so what that looks like is if I go to the bottom of this list on preferences, Illustrator preferences, it says appearance of black. I'm going to check that. So in my dialog box, it asks me how I want black displayed on my screen. On screen, the default setting is display all blacks as rich black. The other setting, which I wish was the default, honestly, is display all blacks accurately. I think it's not the default because most people have no idea that this is an issue. So only commercial printers and commercial designers really pay attention to it. But that's an important setting. And then secondly, this one, output all blacks is rich black. Okay, that could create problems for you. Um, if you're just uploading things to the web, no big deal, that you want that. You want it to make all blacks look dark black. But if you're working in print, you need to make sure that you're outputting blacks accurately because you want your software to give you the predictable result. So you are in control. So I have changed those settings, now click OK. It's imperceptible on this video screen, but if you did this on your home computer, you would see now on your monitor a dark charcoal gray for CMYK, CMYK black instead of rich black. Um, this setting is also uh, available in InDesign and Photoshop. So it's important to adjust that if you're sending a lot of things to print. Because this is going to be a visual cue that, hey, oh, I didn't use the right black for that. The only exception would be um, is text. You always want to use CMYK black for text. You don't want to use rich black for text. The reason being that text is usually a small, tiny little glyph on the page. And if you are trying to register four colors on top of one another, you're going to get a ghost or a glow around the text, and it's just ugly. So text is usually straight up CMYK black. Um, these other color swatches, they just kind of represent how uh, Illustrator treats color differently. On your screen, they might look the same, but in printer output, they're going to look different. Cyan, for example, 100% cyan on the ink. RGB blue looks very close, but in CMYK, RGB, RGB blue has a little bit of uh, magenta in it. And then, of course, a PMS version of that blue is going to be a spot color, treated like a spot color in your dialog box. All right, so make sure that when you set up your artwork, you're paying attention to the colors, swatches you're using. And if this is intended for print, make sure that it's CMYK. And if you have anything that's supposed to be really super dark black, make sure you're using a rich black. Uh, unfortunately, 
I don't think Illustrator has the default rich black swatch in uh, the swatch palette, so you'll have to make it. Um, okay, last thing. Let's just talk a little bit about file formats. So what's awesome about the Adobe software is when you work with an Illustrator file, you get the benefit of it being um, compatible with InDesign or Photoshop. So what does that mean? That means that if you're working on a logo graphic or a piece of artwork and then it's going to be you know, pushed over to InDesign, you don't have to resave it as a different format. You can leave it as an Illustrator file. And actually that's preferable nowadays. Um, your Illustrator file is going to give you a couple things. It's going to give you accurate color, so it's going to leave your color settings alone. It's not going to uh, override your color settings. Secondly, it's going to preserve any any dye or spot color um, information that you have embedded in your file. And secondly, it's going to give you a transparent background. And a lot of reason, a lot of times, that's the reason you're using Illustrator is because you need a graphic or a logo that has a transparent background. So when you do a save as, just leave it as an Illustrator file. You don't have to mess with it. Most of the time, you can leave Illustrator files alone. Um, there are some old commercial printing processes where you want an EPS file. Uh, possibly if you have images and other things embedded in your file, you might need an EPS file to contain it. But uh, pretty much you can get away with Illustrator files. An Adobe PDF file, obviously preferable for sharing your document, preserving your fonts, your images, and your colors. And then SVG, that's going to be more for display graphics, um, especially for apps and other things like that adaptable screens so that actually might be an RGB color issue if you make that file format so we're talking about print stick with Illustrator and you'll be fine um, okay that's a quick little rundown of how to adjust your colors and set them up properly just pay attention to which black and which uh, registration marks and color settings you're using alright see you next time